earliest known map is the Imago Mundi, the Babylonian map of the world, and it dates to somewhere between 700 and 500 BCE. Since then, maps have played an important role in stories throughout history, enabling a hero to chart a course toward their destiny, escape from peril, or gain perspective on the wider world. The International Cartographic Association, which I like to imagine is like the Specialty Coffee Association of map makers, defines a map as a symbolized image of geographical reality, representing selected features or characteristics resulting from the creative effort of its author's execution of choices. In addition to the paper and pixels we're most familiar with as map materials, maps can be made of stone, like the Imago Mundi, of celestial objects, or even something as simple as quilted cloth. The map that features in my story today is the SCA's coffee systems map. In late 2018, after the commodity futures price for green coffee fell to below US $1 per pound for the first time in 12 years and sparked a global conversation about the causes and effects of low coffee prices, the SCA launched the Coffee Price Crisis Response Initiative, a year-long inquiry into these causes and effects aimed at identifying actions for the organization and the specialty coffee industry to take to break a vicious cycle that sees producer incomes falling even as demand for coffee grows. The coffee industry has spent years, decades, discussing the travails of volatile markets and devising solutions, most of which have been project-based. And having seen companies and organizations act individually without a sustained effect, the SCA believed it needed to take a different approach. It was critical to understand the problem both more broadly and more deeply before rushing to solve it. In early 2019, the association contracted Forum for the Future, a nonprofit organization based in the UK with offices in the US, Singapore, and India to facilitate this initiative. And the deciding factor in working with them was their commitment to approaching this issue, low coffee prices, through the lens of systems change. I imagine that the phrase might be unfamiliar, so I'll explain using language from Forum's own website. A systems change approach recognizes that the world is complex and interconnected, that change is nonlinear and happens at multiple levels and over multiple time scales, and that no single actor, even a powerful actor, can achieve large scale change alone. The SCA's engagement with Forum lasted a year, and one step in the process we agreed to undertake was a workshop to map the system, that is, the system we sought to change. The mapping exercise is not unique to SCA. Here you can see an example of another map that Forum developed for another client to address a different problem. And the purpose of the map is to identify points of leverage. Where are we best positioned to intervene and shift the system? In this case, we were looking for those leverage points for the SCA as an association, as well as for specialty coffee actors outside of the organization in the communities that we represent and reach. The mapping workshop was the third in-person convening of the Coffee Price Crisis Response Initiative, and it took place in Campinas, Brazil in July of 2019. The workshop has been described in detail in other talks and in the Price Crisis Response Summary of Work, so I'll only note here that 75 stakeholders hailing from an array of nations and representing many roles in the industry spent a day and a half building diagrams of how coffee in all of its forms and stages works. Over the course of the workshop, we answered questions such as who's involved and what roles do different individuals, organizations, and institutions play? How does money flow through the system? And what about information? Where does it flow easily and where does it get caught? And the most important question of all, of course, is why? Why does the system work the way that it does? And why doesn't it work for everyone? In the context of our year-long journey, the workshop and MAP served to lead the price crisis response team to the conclusion that specialty coffee must address the unequal distribution of value across coffee supply chains and within companies. These conclusions and recommendations are explored in depth in the initiative's summary of work, which was published a few months ago by the SCA and is available for free download from the SCA's website. It was in preparing the diagram from the 2019 workshop to share with a broader audience 
because only the 75 people who participated in the original workshop would have been able to understand the original version without significant explanation, that the SCA realized that perhaps the map itself was a point of leverage. Could the SCA, a trade organization with a unique insider-outsider vantage point on the workings of the specialty coffee sector, create a tool to help reimagine how we tell the most basic, fundamental stories about the value chain? Now, I realize this map looks anything but basic. The first reaction of nearly everyone who sees it is either, wow, that's complicated, or it's beautiful. What is it? I believe it is beautiful, and I recognize that it's complicated. And I hope, as a result of both of those factors, among others, that it's useful. So let's talk about how to use it. The center column should look familiar to many of you as attendees to a coffee-focused conference. It is comprised of six verbs that correspond to stages in coffee's journey that are frequently used to explain how coffee travels and transforms. Diagrams like this are often referred to colloquially as seed to cup diagrams, and a quick Google search will yield dozens of examples, some of which have been developed by trainers to educate their barista staff, and some have probably been developed by baristas to explain to their families what it is that they do. I hesitated to include one of those in this presentation to contrast with the systems map, because the juxtaposition could have too easily become a critique of a single alternate depiction, so I made my own. That's the different, right? The differences are subtle, but they're important. For example, in the seed two cup diagram, the arrows only go one way. They depict the linear unidirectional relationship between activities that corresponds in general terms with how the very tangible product of coffee moves, but omits intangible elements that are crucial to understanding how the system works, including the flows of finance and information. In this map, the activities are still arranged in a line, but the arrows have been omitted. So a user of the map could begin with any activity and move in either direction, depending on what it was that they were seeking to understand. Each activity is also defined briefly below the graphic. While the central column is familiar and comparatively simple, the outer ring adds both beauty and complexity and also makes this graphic feel worthy of its map title. Each of these circles represents one of the less frequently discussed contributors to the coffee value chain, and there are 20 of them. Colorful lines connect each of these actors to the activities they are most often involved in, and the result is a vibrant web. A person interested in understanding what a roaster does can, one, find roasting in the central column of activities, two, read the definition, and three, follow the lines that connect that activity to other actors outside of that central column who might never touch the coffee in the same way that a roaster does, but still perform critical functions. The understanding that this person will have of how roasting works will be deeper and more representative of the coffee sector than a simpler answer would be. And representation matters. Simplicity and ease may seem to lower barriers to entry, but who benefits from the omissions? Maps feature in stories, but they also tell stories. And knowing what we know about the colonial history of the coffee industry and the inequitable power dynamics that persist in coffee supply chains and within firms, we must ask, whom do these stories serve? Likely, the people who are named in them. This chart may appear objective and benign, but someone created it, and I would bet you just about anything they named themselves in it. They made choices, as every storyteller does, about what and whom to include and what not to. Not that appearing on the map is always a pathway to power. During the systems map workshop, our facilitator asked the participants who was familiar with a simple diagram like this one, and absolutely everyone representing roles from exporting to brewing raised their hand, while only a tiny contingent, maybe 5% of producers did. Farmers were on the map, but they'd never seen it. We would be wise not to confuse simple with accessible or objective. Now, this map is not objective either. Beautiful, complex, and hopefully useful, but not objective. 
there are still six activities highlighted among dozens of functions and 20 categories of actor, when in reality, value chains are comprised of thousands of individuals. This map was, too, designed by individuals. The SCA took the output of the workshop in Brazil and sent it to a design firm, One Darnley Road, which also designed our coffee taster's flavor wheel, and then to all of the stakeholders who participated in the Price Crisis Response Initiatives workshops and peer review process, more than 400 people for input. We received a lot of feedback and we made a lot of changes over the course of nearly six months, but even so, this is only a symbolic interpretation of reality. There are additional relationships between activities like roasting and exporting or between farming and brewing that aren't depicted in this map. Nor does it capture the relationships between actors in the outer wheel, like financial institutions and non-governmental organizations. It is version one of who knows how many and it opens as many questions as it answers, but it tells stories that have not been told about how dependent every activity is on skilled labor, about how much more connected these middle activities are to resources than the activities on the producing and consuming ends. In the months and years to come, the SCA will be using this map to tell stories about the inequitable distribution of value, finance, and risk in coffee complex stories. Every individual can choose where to begin and how fast to move through these stories, but once you see the complexity, you can't unsee it. And there's so, so much more where this came from.